Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Hi guys. Uh, we're Terrence and Celia from Hyperkin. So we brought your raffle tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is Hyperkin Presents, working in the retro video game industry. PRGE 2018 edition. Woo! So Celia and I are in the marketing team. It's actually just us, and along with, uh, you know, we have a manager, and a couple people also, you know, they contribute to uh, some of our campaigns at the office. But for the most part, when traveling or doing anything on camera or social media related, it's mostly just her and I. Um, my official title is Public Relations Specialist. What's your title? Uh, communication Specialist. So what is retro gaming? Depends on how old you are, I guess. Um, so, as you can tell, that's a photo of me when I think I was eight years old. Um, you can see those Ninja Turtle bed sheets. Um, if you watch that recent Netflix special or show, The Haunting of Hill House, uh, one of the kids in there has those sheets, and I think that I think that series takes place maybe in like 88, 89, I'm not sure, maybe early 90s, so yeah, you can kind of tell a little bit. Um, that's uh, 486. Um, computer with a Sound Blaster 16 card in there, and I think I'm playing some, I don't even know what game that is, but yeah. So I guess retro gaming for me is kind of like, you know, it's, uh, I would consider it around the N64 generation cutoff. What about you, Sylvia? No, I definitely would agree, um, like, the, like, the fifth generation, you know, like, N64, like, PlayStation, like, 2, I would say, right? Yeah. That's on the side. Um, all those I guess right now, that's like the cutoff for retro. By the way, this is just our typical uh, panel. We're actually at a retro gaming convention, so all of you know all of this, but <laughs> we just have to get through it, so that way um, we can sleep at night. Yeah, so we wake up and laugh. We forgot to tell them what retro gaming was. <laughs> yeah, we, we usually do this, uh, we do this slide at like anime conventions when, where you know, some people are younger and they don't really know what retro gaming is. Okay, so why work in the retro industry? Um, like it says, you know, it's a, it's a niche market. Um, nostalgia at its finest is a quote from Wedbush Securities uh, gaming research analyst Michael Pachter, uh, the 10-year-old in 1985 and 1990, whose first game was Mario, is now a 35, 40-year-old with a job and some money and maybe a kid or two. So yeah, I can definitely kind of uh, vibe with that sentiment. Um, I stopped playing a lot of video games in college. I was mostly into music at that time and just kind of hanging out with friends and I didn't realize that retro gaming was a thing until I started listening to like the Retronauts podcast back in like 06, 07. And I was like, oh, there's people that are really into this stuff too. I thought it was just something I did, you know, um, alone in my room, like uh, crying. I'm not crying. But, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's kind of a cool way to kind of do something that's, uh, I don't know, it's, it is really deeply rooted in my childhood. Um, my parents spoiled me, I was the only child, so I had a lot of consoles. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of like, you know, um, because we're making stuff that's technically brand new, but it caters to sort of like a, a different generation, it is something that not a lot of people get to do, because I mean like, you know, like in music and a lot of other things, yeah, you'll see some stuff like Bruno Mars making kind of like 90s R&B or something. It's not necessarily the same thing, but um, I guess that just makes me the Bruno Mars of retro gaming. <laughs> yes. What about you, Celia? Like, why work in the retro industry? I agree with you. It's nostalgia. Like, if you look around PRG, like, what do you see? You see families, you know, you see the excited dad being like, Oh, I grew up with this, you know, like, and showing their kid. Um, it's, you know, preserving, like, the art of, like, video games. Um, definitely, and you know, passing on to like new generations, and playing it at home on our HDDs. So. so, and it says the industry is booming and trending, yeah. and I think it is. You know, all these companies are coming out with uh, new versions of their old consoles as well. Yeah. Um, just, just this year, Ready Player One came out. It's a big blockbuster, mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg movie. The whole movie was technically about, you know, it's a love letter to just one guy's, you know, love for retro gaming. So. Um, I think it's very, it's popular right now, it's been popular for a really long time. I kind of miss it in the mid-90s when I was able to go to a mom and pop shop and buy, I don't know, Wonder Project uh, for Super Famicom Con for like three dollars, but um, yeah, I'm, still, I'm glad I'm still part of it. Okay, so. 
Where is the industry going? Uh, you can see here, this is a photo of when Celia met the real Cuphead. The real Cuphead. Yeah, like not the fake one, the real one. That's a, that was at the, the Cuphead uh, launch party, so you know that's the real Cuphead. Yeah, he said so. Anyways. His name's Steven Rowland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely, like, you know, the, the industry is expanding, you know, you're seeing a lot of, like, you know, like, uh, retro themed events happening. Um, you're seeing like you know mainstream like companies you know, like Nintendo and like uh, PlayStation's coming out with PlayStation Mini. You know there's the NES Classic boom. Uh, who here tried to get an SNES Classic or NES Classic? Who just has the console at home anyway? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so people are jumping in on it. Like there's also the Neo Geo Mini, um, the Classic, like I said, the, the Mega Drive Mini, and the Casio Luigi Redux. So like there's so many. So I know uh, Cassio Luffy Redux is a joke uh, that's not coming out. <laughs> Who knows what a Cassio Luffy is? Yeah! Yeah! Oh my gosh. You're the one. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like there's tons of like uh, uh, people, like, you know, companies making like these kind of consoles to go back to the nostalgia with it. And also, uh, original car prices, since a lot of collectors and a lot of people are getting out on it, cartridges are, you know, going up in price as well. So, there's more collectors out on the scene. <laughs> Definitely, like uh, like I said, that joke about trying to get Wonder Project for Super Famicom, but it's like, I don't know how much it is now, but I know it's not $3 anymore. Um, when I was a kid, there was a store called Gameland. It was in Lakewood, California, where I grew up, and my dad would take me there, and I, I didn't know anything about retro gaming, because at the time, it was only one generation over. It was like, N64 had just come out, and the store was selling all these import games, so, um, yeah, basically, it was just me... Uh, asked my dad to buy me a bunch of games, and he's super happy because like these games are like two ninety nine, two ninety nine. I bought Street Fighter two, Street Fighter two Turbo for like four bucks each, and this was like ninety six, ninety seven. You can't do that today. I think I saw Turbo today for twenty five at one of the vendors. Yeah, I got um when I was a kid, I got Hey You Pikachu in box for five dollars. Actually, <laughs> let's let's just go over me and Celia's uh, history with retro gaming. We kind of skipped over that. So Celia, do you want to talk about how you got into retro gaming? Okay, um, ooh, okay, so, um, so my story, I guess, like, I guess introduction to, like, I guess, video games in general is, is a bit different than, um, a lot of people usually. Uh, usually, you know, you get your first console at Christmas, uh, or your birthday. Um, uh, I guess my story is a little bit different, um, it actually doesn't even start with me, it starts with my neighbor. So, um, so let's go, uh, like, 1997, uh, I had a neighbor kid, uh, who did really, really bad in school. And uh, he did so bad, the thing to do to punish him was to uh, take his Nintendo 64 and give it to the neighbor kids that hated him. Uh, hi, I'm the neighbor kid. So <laughs> I remember coming home <laughs> from school one day, and like, you know, it's me coming home, and um, seeing my dad hooking up the Nintendo 64. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And my mom's like, I don't know, I'll play it. And uh, so I did. And uh, he ended up moving, so I kept it. And <laughs> from there, like, you know, I started opening up, I guess, my rage video games. So, like, then I went to SNES, then, you know, I got a GameCube, and, like, you know, Dreamcast, and a PlayStation 2, and then I never bought anything again. And so, flash forward, uh, working at Hyperkin, uh, like, it really, like, you know, my love of retro gaming, like, I didn't know that it was, there was a whole community about it. Like, I didn't know that, you know, there was so much more. And um, I never, like, talked to the Terrence. He's like, oh, you play video games. And I'm like, yeah, like, I have a PlayStation 2. It's my uh, newest console. Which, by the way, they stopped making games in 2014, so in my head it's modern. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, like, I guess that introduced me, and, like, my, my local community is just always this stuff from there. How about you, Terry? How did you Yeah, uh, I remember, I vividly remember the Toys R Us in Cerritos, California. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> there was, uh, my parents uh, put me in the shopping cart. I don't know if I was that small. It's probably like one or two. Yeah, probably like closer to three. Uh -huh. So I was kind of hanging out in the shopping cart, probably, and they were buying me the NES. And it was the NES that came packed in with Super Mario Brothers and the Blaster, the Zapper. So it was the combo Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt uh, cartridge. And ever since then, I remember just every year I would get like a new console for Christmas. So I got the I got a Game Boy, um, the MG, the SNES, the Genesis. Um, I got a PlayStation from my aunt, and she lived in Japan at the time, so she sent me one of those. Um, N64, Game Gear, and yeah, like, uh, like I said, I was spoiled, I was uh, the only child, and that was like my reward for doing well in school, or just my birthday or something, and uh, there's just something very special to me about uh, retro gaming that 
I don't necessarily get from a lot of modern games. Um, I do find it in a lot of indie games, I guess, that do have the style, but there's just something kind of, uh, you know, like heartwarming about yeah. popping in. Um, like Splatterhouse, you know, like Christmas morning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so I I started hanging out with a bunch of other kids that started, well kids, I was in college, but started, uh, other people that started doing, uh, that started playing retro games. Um, I started finding out about Chiptune, which is, you know, making music using obsolete uh, consoles. Um, I started a band in 2012, we're called Here Between You Me, we've been doing it um, pretty on and off for the past two years, but we were going pretty hard for the first couple, maybe five years, so it's allowed me to meet a lot of people in different retro gaming scenes and just uh, music scenes in general. So yeah, it's been a really fun ride, working at Hyperkin, um, you know, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day on the weekends, playing shows using a Game Boy and hanging out with other people who are into that kind of stuff. It's just kind of been my whole life for a really, really long time. So, so yeah, what is Hyperkin? Okay. Us. Okay. No, um, so, okay. So, Hyperkin, uh, we're a company. We make a lot of, um, like, I guess, video game peripherals, uh, retro consoles, um, VR accessories. Um, we're, I guess, very involved, I guess, in like, the accessory market. And yeah, I mean, yeah. we kind of started off doing controllers. I started uh, at the company in 2014, so I wasn't there since the beginning. So, you started in 16, right? Yes. So, I was there right when the Retron 5. Uh, came out. So what happened was, as some of you might know, there was kind of a whole um, media frenzy, I guess, because we kept kind of delaying the console, and I got hurt right in the middle of that. So imagine just me, like, kind of like, uh, you know, talking to people, talking to people at conventions, just letting them know, hey, you know, it's coming out, I know you're frustrated, we are too, but, you know, we just want to make it perfect for you. So um, Retro 5 is kind of what, I guess, I want to say put us on the map in terms of the retro gaming industry. Um, I know people have bought the Superboy in the past and um, some of like our Retron 2, Retron 3. But Retron 5 is, I guess, what kind of made us um, stand out for, you know, around 2014, 2015. So at the time, we were considered an indie um, company. And I think we're, we were considered an indie company up until maybe like two years ago. But since we started doing officially licensed stuff with Xbox, Samsung, uh, recently Capcom, we've officially kind of dropped the indie title. So um, yeah, it was kind of interesting seeing what an indie company was like, and then kind of transitioning to doing you know stuff with like uh, Xbox and uh, Samsung. So yeah, our roots. So Celia, explain the Superboy. Okay, so uh, out of curiosity, um, who loves SNES? Oh, yay, everyone. <laughs> who wish that, like, who as a kid or, you know, as an adult, who wish that uh, you could take the, uh, the SNES outside with you and play on the go? You, <laughs> That's the Super Bowl I have to see. Okay, so what's cool about it, uh, this is actually the third rendition of, uh, I guess, the Super Bowl line. Uh, we started out with the Super Bowl, then the first Super Bowl in 2011. Then in 2016, we came up with the Super Bowl S. Yeah, I believe it was the late 2016, early 2017. Yeah, early, yeah, so that range became the Superboy S. And this is also, I guess, an, on the Superboy X line, so the Superboy SFC. So the Superboy X has um, a traditional, I guess, purple um, kind of American, you know, style of uh, color scheme. Well, this one has more of like a, like, Super Famicom style. Um, so like the coloring for that. So basically, it plays um, through SNES and SFC cartridges. Um, like on the go, up to 10 hours of battery life. Um, there's like a brightness button on it. Um, there's for this one is 4 3 69 aspect ratio button. And also, another cool thing about it is that you can plug in AV cables and play on your TV. So yes. it's, and uh, you can plug in your controllers. Yeah, and two controllers as well. So yeah, you can play with your friends and play on the go. So yeah, I guess um, when I was, when I was uh, making this. Uh, PowerPoint. I we have we actually didn't have these titles on top, so I put our roots because uh -huh. this is kind of what started getting um, our, our name around. And I know some celebrities actually have the Superboy, which I think is really funny. Um, Serena Williams has one. Um, Soldier Boy actually gave him one um, at E3 because uh, because he um, we just offered it to him because he's a big fan of our stuff. Um, recently, we found out um, AJ Styles has um, a Superboy. He got one a couple of years ago. AJ Styles is now the current WWE champion. Uh, and a big retro 
Um, and, and who else? The weekend. The weekend has one. So if you're into R and B, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so I would consider Superboy kind of like introduction to who we are, I guess our style. Um, we kind of like doing kind of quirky stuff. Uh, it's very lighthearted. Um, a lot of our early stuff is very like, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say it looks like toys or anything, but it, it doesn't look intimidating. Um, it doesn't have a lot of hard edges. It's kind of bubbly and kind of cute. So um, that's kind of like who we are. Our, our, I mean, our mascot is just a, it's a, it's a hippo. So <laughs> it's a blue hippo that's 25 and apparently works at our office. So I don't think it's based on me. Okay, a milestone. So the Retron 5, I explained to you earlier um, how that was when it first came out. Um, this is still like, you know, we still get, uh, so I actually handle all the social media, yeah. like directly. So if you message us on Facebook or Twitter, it's, it's going to us or our phones. So I still get messages about the Retron 5. I try my best to answer them. Um, you know, we're somewhat still supporting it, I guess, and um, we, you know, people still encounter things here and there, but it's kind of cool to see that people are still buying the Retron 5, even though we do offer the Super Retron HD, the Retron HD, and now we're coming out with the Mega, Mega Retron HD, which comes out on the 29th. So the Retron 5 is just sort of like, um, this is, you know, like, uh, all my friends are into the retro gaming scene. They were coming up to me asking about it, but um, it wasn't until it actually came out when I heard a lot of people who don't play retro games or not into the retro gaming scene, they started asking about the Retro 5. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like, this is kind of what um, what I like to call the cool dad system. Because it's a bunch of dads who aren't necessarily gamers, but they play games as a kid. So they're like, well, I think I'm going to pick this up so I can, I can at least show my kids like what I was doing when I was like their age. And um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, we get a lot of cool dads and, you know, cool moms. At the, at the conventions, just kind of talking to us and kind of uh, geeking out about it. But they say, like, you know, we don't really play video games, but it was cool to pick one, pick up one of these just so I could show my kids what um, I did as a kid. So, which is kind of weird because, like, when my parents bought me video games, they were happy to do it, but they were like, yeah, also don't play video games. But now I think it's just so acceptable that, um, you know, their parents are just willing to kind of shower their kids in retro gaming, which is kind of cool. My mom takes credit for getting the Nintendo from our neighbor. So. <laughs> Innovation. So, can you kind of talk, maybe talk about, like, um, you know, I guess what our dev team is up to. Why, why would the smart, part, the smart boy be called Innovate? Or why would, they, why would they title this Innovation? And what are, like, some of the weird projects we've been kind of diving into? Okay, so, yeah, like, our, okay, our development team are geniuses. And they just come up with like the craziest what ifs like scenarios and like situations and they're like, that's kind of cool. Let's make it a product. Um, so that was, I guess one of the things example for that, like for innovation, is the smart boy because um, our developer Chris, he uh, he came up with uh, I guess like an idea of making a device, you know, a Game Boy device where you can plug in your cartridges into your phone and, and play it like you used to. And um, I had this boss at the time, it's like, oh, well, uh, you know, I, I don't know about that. I'm sorry, I'm down on it. And he's like, oh, well, let's make it a name of full show and, you know, see if people like it. And it blew up. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, like, this is real. You know, everyone's getting super excited about yeah, it. My, my phone died that day because I left all the, the push notifications on my phone and uh -huh. it just kept going bing, 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 bing. And I tried to like log <laughs> out of our, of our uh, Twitter and Facebook account, yeah. but it died within like, I think an hour of just not stopping notifications. It was crazy. Yeah. I've never seen. People go that crazy for such a for a fake item, basically. Yeah, no, it was literally it was just April Fools, and they were like, "Okay, I guess everyone likes it, so we made it." Um, and like, it's kind of like one of those things where like we ended up getting licensing, you know, with Samsung for it, so we made it for like next, next gen phones, so USB Type C. And I don't know these type of items. I guess like with our dev team, it's it's not only like you know like you know making sure you know retro items are you know we're bringing back, but also coming up with new ways to do it. In weird ways, we're taking yeah. chances here. This does, I mean, without the phone, I wish I had the, the smart boy here, but without the phone in it, the smart boy doesn't look like anything. It just kind of looks like half of a controller or something like that. You don't, wouldn't know what it is, so we kind of took a chance. Um, this is like a, sort of a big leap for us, and they like basically all of 2017, um, most of the messages were people just asking, hey, uh, do you guys still carry this? And it, that's it. I'm not saying they didn't say, hey, you guys still have the smart boy. 
you guys carry that Game Boy looking thing? Did you say, I think it's because there were so many videos being shared and um, so many viral videos being uh, passed along. They kind of just thought Hyperkin was the name of the product and they've never heard of anything else we did. So they just thought that Hyperkin was just the, like, the name of that device. Yeah. So I still get those to this day. They're just asking, hey, how much? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, yeah, the smart boy. I'm like, you know, we make other stuff. He's like, oh. And yeah, it's kind of funny, but I think that's kind of cool because it, that just means that the smart boy was kind of like our first foray into getting kind of mainstream appeal. So we were really super happy with that um, response. And it was just kind of funny because it started off as an April Fool's joke. And it looks, it looks kind of funny at, at first, but when you see the phone in it, oh, it, you know, it makes sense. Um, yeah. People message us and ask us if the hyperkin is still available. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> a new era. So, yes. <laughs> so I, I guess I, I called this a new era because even though we've been doing retro gaming for a really, really long time and kind of doing our own thing, releasing the retro consoles, um, we started opening up a conversation with Xbox. And I think that started probably around 2016. Yeah. We came out with the X91 controller, which is our retro style controller. It's a smaller uh, controller, but it still has the features of a modern controller. So, I don't know what happened, but I think the story goes, um, Seamus, yeah, Seamus Blackley, um, one of the, I guess, the, the godfather of Xbox, um, as he would be called, uh, he started a conversation asking if anyone would like if he were to remake the Duke. And it was a very dramatic time in his life. Apparently, he said stuff was thrown at him when they yeah. first announced the new controller for the first Xbox. <laughs> and I think that's unfair. No one should throw anything at someone because of controller. Um, <laughs> the only throwing anyone should ever do is if um, you actually are holding a controller and you're playing, uh, I don't know, uh, Destiny of an Emperor for any Because I've, I've broken a controller that way. <laughs> I think, um, um, no, it wasn't me, it was my cousin, and I got mad at him for breaking my controller. That was a really sad day. I was like, dude, it's, it's an RPG, calm down. Um, let's grind it out. Anyway, so the Duke is basically, it's our attempt at replicating the original Xbox controller. And so, this is kind of a milestone for us. I know it just sounds like we're just doing our own horn, but it's more just us, you know, going through our the history and how it's been kind of a weird ride for us because there's not too many other jobs like this. If you go into marketing, like yeah. I myself, I, I study journalism, and a lot of my friends just got into marketing. Um, it's kind of hard being a journalist nowadays with the internet and you know, and pagers. But like, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you what, if you study communications, yeah, and so in theater, in theater, yes. So <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of people who do communications also end up in marketing. Yeah, I never thought I would end up, um, you know, doing a marketing job. Um, for a company that I actually purchased items from. Um, so this is kind of a unique job because, I mean, um, of course we, we do have people, like other companies that are doing things similar to us, but again, there's only still only like one marketing guy on their team or two marketing people on their team, and technically that just means there's only like 10, 15 people on, you know, around the earth that are literally only marketing um, these retro accessories and consoles. So it's kind of funny to us that like, this is what we're doing, this is what we do for a living. Um, yeah, it's basically just hyping up um, products for yeah. Yeah, just uh, people already check us out. But, okay, let's get back to the um, It's big. Yeah, it's very big. So basically, yeah, what happened is, uh, um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, they, they were like, yeah, we're gonna let you do this. We're gonna let you be the first company to recreate a first party item. Um, yeah, and so, Chris and yeah. Shane started talking, Chris, our, our product developer, and they were like, oh, what if you put the animation of the Xbox startup uh, screen in the controller? And so what happened is like, yeah, let's try it out. So I guess like they, Chris started mingling a bunch of like cell phones or something like that, yeah, or they, they, to see what the perfect screen would be to put into this thing. Yeah, he just, he said he bought a bunch of stuff. I remember one time the guys bought a page, like a couple pagers. Yeah, I don't know why, I think that it was the new research for the guy, I have no idea why. And I just remember a bunch of pagers at the office and beepers. And so eventually, yeah, they figured out the best way to get that um, startup screen in there. And then the other problem is like, um, you know, we couldn't do this wirelessly. As yeah. you know, like we can't do um, technically a third party item that's wireless. So we had to make it wired, but we made it detachable because we knew that realistically no one's 
probably going to make this her daily driver. It's probably going to be on a display yeah. somewhere. So we made the, the, the cable the, the detachable so people can put it in a podium or what have you. Um, maybe like that. maybe they've designated um, a guest room for the Duke, I'm pretty sure, or a storage yeah, so. facility. Uh, yeah, or a crater. <laughs> yeah, that's right enough. And so yeah, I guess this is technically like the new era of Hyperkin, I would say. We are still doing retro stuff, or sorry, we're, we're, we're kind of doing modern stuff, but we're doing it our way. Yeah. If we were going to do a first, or do a official license product for Xbox, we at least want to do it in the weirdest way possible and bring back a controller that is somewhat controversial, I would say. So, what's new in 2018? So, so yeah, let me go down the list. Okay, so um, who's heard of the Retron 77? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, we released our Retron 77. Um, it plays 2,600 cartridges um, in beautiful 720 HD, uh, 720p HD. Uh, so we came out with that on July uh, 7 7 for the Retron 77. Get it? Do you guys get it? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Get it? It's because the item's hot and it came out during the summer. That's the joke, right? Yeah. Got it, Terrence. I don't understand word puns. <laughs> so we came up with that. We were really excited about it. Um, okay, we also came out with the Mega Retron HD. Well, we are coming out with the Retron HD. Um, so the Mega Retron HD comes out October 29th. Um, and that plays Genesis and it plays Mega Drive cartridges also in 720p. And what's cool about this is it's also it's a, it's a hardware solution. So um, that's exciting. Um, then we also came out, we're coming out with the S wheel for Xbox One, uh, which is like a wireless, uh, I guess, like wheel. Mm -hmm. And the X88, which is a wireless uh, chat headset for Xbox One. Uh, and that will be coming out around holiday season. Yeah, we don't have an exact date for that yet. Um, so I just put holiday because I believe it's coming out around that time. Mm -hmm. um, don't quote me on that, but um, I think we're aiming for a holiday season. So. Yeah, it's also always good to check our uh, social media page because once we get release dates for things, like Terrence and I like pop that on there. So, yeah. Okay, so um, we kind of sped through this, so we do have time for a Q and A. Um, basically, since we are the marketing team, we know enough about, I guess, retro gaming in general yeah. and our products in general. But um, if you have anything super technical, like we can kind of answer it, but. Just know that it'd be best to like maybe email it to us. We can forward it to the dev team because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able, or I don't know if we'd be able to answer a lot of super technical stuff, which has been done in the past. Uh, it was cool though. We were, there were, people were okay with just emailing us after. But you know, general questions and maybe our thoughts on retro gaming. Um, we have opinions on too, and uh, I don't know our like hamburger preferences in and out. But like I think just anything that you want to ask, uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. So uh, any questions, friends? Okay, uh, let's go, your, your hand was first. Um, have you ever had the idea to make a brand new device, like maybe like some kind of a new N-Gage, for instance? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I mean, uh, I, okay, here's a story. I've actually only touched the N-Gage once in my life. It was uh, 2004, and I was a senior in high school. And so, you know, I guess you know how old I am now. Um, <laughs> I remember my friend, he was like, a, he was like one of the star soccer players in our school. And he busted out the end gauge and he had a bunch of games for it. And I was like, what the heck is that? And he's like, oh, it's the end gauge. And it's, I think Nokia made it and I was kind of confused. And I played with it and I thought it was pretty cool. And then, like, it just kind of, I think what happened is Nintendo released the DS, like that same like holiday season or just right after that and um, yeah so it kind of obliterated the end gauge but in terms of if you're asking are we going to do release uh, like a remake of like a super quirky like kind of obscure console probably not I know people ask us about the turbo graphics sometimes but like honestly um, I guess my best guess why we haven't actually made a turbo graphics system just yet is because a lot of our partner stores are, you know, the people who are going to be selling these items, a lot of them don't have a lot of Hue cards. Like, they don't have them in stock. I mean, it's kind of hard to come across a Hue card at just any other store. So that might be the reason. But yeah, I mean, we kind of still aim for like the really popular systems. Um, I personally would love to do a TurboGrafx system because, I mean, like my online gaming alias sometimes is TurboGrafx, but the, instead of T-U-R, it's T-E-R. Get it? 
because it's really hot in the summer and that's why we released the uh, Red Giant 77? I don't understand where you're playing out. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, yes. Um, you guys are both in marketing, but could you um, describe what are the kind of jobs that people do in, in your company and in the industry in general? And what, what could you describe what the company is structured like and what people do besides what you guys do? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can you go over the, like, the team? Okay, yeah, yeah okay. So, uh, besides marketing and me and Terry staff, uh, we have our uh, research and development team. Um, that's led by uh, Chris, uh, the guy we keep on mentioning, our developer guy. And um, like he's in charge of like coming up with product ideas, um, testing things out, uh, working on like, new features for products, uh, you know, research and development. <laughs> um, then we also have like our sales team, which deals with like our partners and you know handles you know uh, sales, you know, gets in stores. Uh, then we also have our creative team, uh, which designs the packaging for our products. So you know, like our lovely like lay cut on our consoles and like the nice look to it. Um, they also, you know, handle marketing materials and all that. Then there's like operations, making sure, you know, behind the scenes, IT, um, warehouse, making sure that. And um, yeah, I think that's Yeah. That's like, all uh, you know, our sales team will they'll do like international distribution too. Yeah. Um, let's see, R&D. Chris actually, he is kind of like, um, even though Celia and I do a lot of stuff in person and on camera, Chris is also sort of like the face of the company too because, you know, um, he can relate to a lot of the people who are fans of our products, like the developer side. And, um, yeah, he kind of used to do a lot of the on-camera stuff. So he's still pretty pretty heavily involved in, uh, you know, I guess, like he'll do interviews here and there yeah. too. So, and the thing is, all of us kind of help each other out. Even though we do, we are split up into different departments. Um, we do a lot of stuff that normally we wouldn't do, at least in our job titles. And so it makes it kind of cool because it makes it more of a, like a family vibe. Help each other out and so complain if it's something that um, we wouldn't normally do because it just means you get to learn something new. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's kind of like how our company is structured. Mm -hmm. And you know, of course we have like, um, you know, upper management. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. How did you get that to work? That's actually a good story, and honestly, you'd actually have, like, I, I wouldn't be able to do it justice. You'd have to shoot us an email. You can do media at hyperkin.com, and I can get you the full story. Honestly, I think, um, who was it? Was it, was it GameSpot or IGN that did a full on? Like, um, it was IGN. IGN? IGN did if, you look, if you look up the IGN article, they did a full on coverage of um, how the Duke was made. They interviewed uh, Seamus Blackley. Um, Denise, who actually did the actual design of the controller. Yeah. Um, Denise actually went to, this is funny, I did this on my own, my own research. <laughs> Denise went to RISD, which is Rhode Island School of Design. Um, she went to RISD the same time as uh, Seth MacFarlane, the creative family guy was going there. Mm -hmm. So I still have yet to ask her if she knows Seth or if they're friends. I wouldn't, I don't know why they'd be friends, but you never know. You should ask if, you, if they are, uh, if you should all hang out. He's sick, just the creator of the yeah. new controller and the guy who Peter Griffin. Just yeah. hanging out, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's a pretty good story, um, and I think it might be covered in the article. If not, just shoot us an email. I think Chris can actually It'll give you a full like rundown of it, because it's kind of, it's pretty technical, and I was actually pretty amazed when he like explained it to me. Really so. cool. <laughs> okay, what else, yes? What's that? Do you guys see yourself, as far as like the consoles and stuff going, uh, in the future do you see yourselves going more FPGA-based emulation or software? Is that too tight? Yeah, maybe run down the, the two store the, the two timelines of the retron. Okay, yeah, so we have two different timelines. Wow. Okay, so it's like the it's like Terminator or like Back to the Future. Okay, so um, a lot of the consoles that we were showing off, like I guess at a PRGE were like our Retron H D, um, our Super Retron, our, our Mega Retron H D as well. Um, you guys all notice they all have H D in the title. Uh, so one of our our uh, I guess split off of our timeline is that we have the H D line, um, which are all um, HD solutions that are hardware based. Then we also have, you know, like the, the Retron line, Retron 1, Retron 2, Retron 3, uh, 4, and 5. And. Go 4. Oh, why did you go 4? Oh my gosh, spoilers, just kidding. 
uh, so five, uh, that, okay, or so one through three, and then five, um, which is like, I guess our number base. Four number came out. That four actually just became the five. Yeah. If you want. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, for that, um, the Retron five is um, partial, like it's part of our such software emulation. So we have like that timeline as well. And the Retron seventy seven, I guess it's in the yeah. timeline since it is emulation. Yeah, the seventy seven is kind of like I don't know the. That weird uh, twin paradox in, yeah. in time travel. Mm -hmm. We can do a whole presentation on just time travel right now. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Primer? Or I think it's called Primer. It was a it was an early two thousands indie film. No, I and these guys actually built. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's like our like I guess our HD line, but uh, we are focusing also on. FPG. Yeah, so we're just kind of working our way through the consoles. Um, yeah. I can't confirm what we're doing after the Mega Retron, which is the latest one in our hardware solutions. Um, but just know, I guess, like, where I think we're just trying to go one console at a time. But for some reason, we just blasted through, like, um, NES, SNES, Genesis, um, you know, the 2600. We did that all within, like, two years. So yeah. that's just kind of like what we've been, I guess you can say we're focusing on that right now. Okay, so yeah, we showed that. That's actually called the Ultra GB, and uh, we showed that off at CES. Uh, the thing for that, though, is that um, it's still in development. Um, our developers are always constantly working on projects. So for any updates on that, you know, stay tuned to our social media pages. So that's, that's as far as I can go for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that? I just wanted to ask, uh, I might have missed this, I was about five minutes late, but where are you based out of? Uh, we're in like based Los Angeles, but more specifically Pomona, California. Okay, and um, what kind of media presence do you, do you have as far as um, being on the internet? Do you, do you create other videos on your website that sort of demonstrate um, maybe the creation of the hardware or demonstrations of the hardware being used? Are there lots of videos out there that explain these things? Or Yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Um, YouTube. I believe it's just Hyperkin.com slash, oh sorry, YouTube.com slash Hyperkin, or it might be Hyperkin Games Inc. I think that's the official channel name. But yeah, um, we were pretty active for the past maybe three or four years just kind of creating content for that. We kind of tried, um, and we have a lot of how-to videos. Uh -huh. um, we have like kind of funny videos where Celia and I are just promoting like an event or something. Yeah. Um, we have weird ones where we're like, you know, we, we filmed one of our colleagues uh, playing, um, it was Alien Isolation on VR, and just kind of uh, filming him freaking out on camera. That was pretty fun. We were promoting our uh, our protective skins for the HTC Vive. Um, but yeah, yeah, we do have a lot of content content on YouTube. We tried our hand at streaming on Facebook Live, which is where we usually stream. So if you go on our Facebook page, you can catch us. We used to do a regular stream that was every Thursday, but ever since we kind of moved into our new office, yeah. we've kind of lost swing of things, and that's just because we're building our, um, I guess, sort of like our, our studio. Yeah. So we're kind of setting up stuff in there. We'll do streams every once in a while, um, but I guess just expect more soon, just because I guess we're just we're just kind of catching up um, after the move. Yeah. Um, but also, Sue and I do a lot of stuff uh, when we're not on camera, which includes like we actually write the packaging. Yeah. So you write <laughs> this. This is me and Terrence. Yeah. We're, we write that stuff. <laughs> um, we, Actually, create the titles. Yeah. So if you saw like our title title scheme for our new controllers, it's all basically like military mm -hmm. um, ranks, scout, the cadet, um, the trooper that's coming up, the trooper, so you have the uh, captain, oh, a sergeant, general. I don't know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> pay attention to our social media pages. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> also, I'd like to think the trooper is. Uh, I'd like to think the trooper is military base, but in my in the back of my head, it's just the Iron Maiden song, so... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I made her listen to it when writing the... Oh my god, yeah, he made me listen to it when I was writing the copy for that. <laughs> no, he's like, Celia, if you don't include something in reference to that, like, uh, we're not friends yeah. anymore. <laughs> Thanks for your uh, Um... What was the question, though? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 
I was, oh. just, I was mostly curious about, yeah, if you have how-to videos. Yeah, we have how-to videos, like, um, Do we have any yeah. videos on hand? We have, oh, we do have videos on hand we can show you. I think we have a little bit less than 10 minutes, so I guess closer to 4.40 we can start doing a raffle. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so let's... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, we are a red red That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's our Smart Boy trailer that we shot. Which is. Okay. Thanks, Windows. <laughs> I should have put VLC. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what those are added later on. I'm not sure. I was actually at not the company at the time. Mm -hmm. 
And so we kept delaying the console because we wanted to make it a little bit better. And it got to the point where it wasn't actually the, the same console anymore. It was a completely new console. We decided to just call it the Retron 5. And that's like a really weird explanation, but that's sort of like our official statement. Um, but who knows, maybe we'll go back to the 4 and it'll play like CDI or something. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, friends? One more, and we can get to our raffle, because we want to get some prizes to this. Make it a weird one. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. We can go to the raffle. Oh, oh no, we have oh. a question. Sorry, I guess real quick, since you mentioned the CDI, has there been any thought around sort of making consoles for like optical media-based systems, like Saturn or PlayStation or something like that? I don't think so. Not at the office. We haven't heard anything from our dev team. Um, I know it's that kind of thing is actually kind of hard just um, getting like multiple discs and you know I know people have, are attempting it and but we don't, just don't know too, we don't know too much about our dev team attempting it yeah. but who knows maybe in the future that could be something we'll work on but for right now we're you know it's kind of cartridge based yeah, systems based, yeah. okay so uh, we want some controllers Woo! okay what's better than that okay who wants some controllers Woo! Time. Um, I'm not going to say it's, it feels close to the original NES controller, only because it does have a different, um, like it does have a very different design. Like you can see that the corners are filleted. Mm -hmm. So I've heard people complain that the edges of the NES controller are kind of big into your hands. So we wanted to give some, you know, I guess some sort of er modern ergonomics, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, it's basically our uh, premium. Uh, controller for the NES. And this also comes in versions for like USB, yeah. and also we make one, we make one for the the classic, right? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. NES classic. So yeah. Okay. Good luck. Okay. So the first number is eight, four, six, seven, seven, four, nine. Do we have a winner? Here. Oh, oh, oh cute! Yay! Okay. Congratulations on, okay, do you want a scout controller, or, 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 sorry, cadaver here, sorry, I grabbed this, I'm like, we can get a photo, yeah, we can get a photo here, yeah, all right, one, two, three, thank you, there we go, okay, the next is going to be for a scout controller, okay, so the scout is our premium uh, controller for the SNES, and does this come in a version that's SFC style, or no, uh, not, not we don't, right? Okay, so this one, yeah, does have the NTSC style on it, and yeah, this one does have, I think it's kind of cute, because it has kind of like, like bumps on the back, that like, it's like, you can't tell, because it's kind of like squarish on the front, a little bottom on the back, it has these ergonomic bumps, so it makes it all round and cute. So, um, yeah, this is our premium controller for the SNES. Okay, so the next number, for the Scout controller, is... Eight, four, <laughs> six, seven, seven, four, two. It's me. Whoa. Oh, it's you. Yay! Woo! Seven four four. Right. Oh yay! Whoa! 
Okay, so we kind of have this thing where whenever we do raffles, no one ever shows up to get like to get their prize. This is the first time we've been literally like what three for three now. Yes. It's scaring me. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You have some good vibes in this room. Four more. Okay. That's an awesome John Hancock shirt. Right yeah. There. I get your photo. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We got what, one more scout? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Do one more scout? After this, guys, can we do like a group photo or something? Um, yeah, we try to do one every single uh, panel. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So, for the last scout. Eight. Four. Six, seven, six, two, eight. That's for that guy. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> he said something. Yeah, I jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> and Casio Loopy did. I love the Casio Loopy. <laughs> it comes with stickers. Like, it makes great. stickers. It makes stickers. <laughs> okay. There's like the Pokemon Snap Machine at the mall. I love <laughs> Pokemon Snap Machine. Okay. The next number. I mean, ticket. For the scout. Eight, four, six, seven, seven, four, six. That's you? Oh. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. But on the top, you just press the three trees. 